What's up YouTubers and plant lovers? It's Justin and today I was going to show you how to care for and repot my ficus elastica. Now yes, this is the same fast ficus elastica that I had and did one of my very first videos on. That should tell you that uh, this is an odor plant for me. It's one of the first ones that I've had uh, since I started the channel and did those videos way back when. So uh, I have not repotted this plant. That should tell you how long overdue it is. But I wanted to go ahead and do that today. Truth be told, he kind of got pushed to the back. And I don't want to say pushed to the back. He really got pushed to the front and was up against closer in my plant room and was up against the east facing window where he would get ample morning light. And then I moved him into the living room because he started dropping a little bit of leaves, more specifically the ones on the bottom. And then when I moved him into the living room into the southern exposure, uh, he started dropping a little bit more. And then I didn't use too much humidity this winter or as much as I really should have. So he did drop a little bit more leaves around the bottom hence this kind of almost lollipopping where he's got a bunch of uh, ample growth up top towards the canopy and is looking kind of sickly and skinny down here towards the bottom of the uh, bush or the plant now you've probably heard it called the rubber fig the rubber bush the rubber tree plant or the Indian rubber tree. And I still am sure there are a lot of more common names for this plant, but you'll hear it called the rubber tree. And the reason for that is if you go ahead and nick or do some pruning or just kind of actually knock a stem and cut it, you will see a milky kind of white latexy, latexy looking sap that will come out that gave rise to a common name, the rubber tree plant. Uh, and back in the uh, early 1900s, they used to use that rubber as a main ingredient for a lot of inferior rubbers. But then when synthetics came along, they don't really use it a whole bunch anymore. But that's where it got its common name was from the sap that would actually exude whenever you cut the tree. Now, this plant is native to around the Himalayas, to Sumatra, around Malaysia, and Java. So it's around the tropics, kind of like the rainforest area. So this plant does like a lot of humidity, typically around 40%. A lot of bright, indirect sunlight it gets to be about 100 feet tall out in the wild, which isn't too crazy tall for a tree. So that's why you will hear it called a bush. But uh, it will be kind of overgrown in the tropics. So it does like a little bright, indirect light. It doesn't like a whole lot of direct light, though it can take some direct light, especially if you do have an established plant. And versus variegated and unvariegated, some people will say the variegated can take a little bit more light just because they don't have as much green on the leaves. So where they do have the green, all the chlorophyll is concentrated and it will need a brighter light to kind of penetrate that to give the plant uh, its photosynthesizing ability to produce sugars and turn that into or take sugars and produce it into energy but like I said with mine he is a solid burgundy kind of color which means he's got the dark green on top and the kind of under mid rib vein it's kind of a pinkish reddish color but he does really good up against the window in my southeast or my south facing exposure so if you do have the variegated form you can just be very careful with that just like with any other plant when you first get it you'll want to kind of monitor it the first week or so just to make sure where you have it is ideal for your plant because with all that white variegation along the mid ribs and the uh, outer part of the leaf that will burn really easily so you got to be very careful whenever taking light into consideration and just kind of monitor it for the first week or so to make sure that where you do have it it will get okay kind of light it doesn't need as bright light as your ficus lorata if you do have the fiddle leak fig i've noticed mine actually needs to be up against the window because he loves a lot of bright direct light with those leaves though they can burn easily too so just like with any kind of ficus that you may have you just want to kind of observe it to make sure that uh, it's getting the right amount of light and the right intensity for the right duration and wherever you have it now I do have blinds so I will open them up in the morning I mean kind of all the way open the window to expose it in the morning and then at night when it starts to get a little bit past noon I will probably draw the blinds in a little bit and kind of crack them open so a whole lot of intensity is not really striking these leaves 
Now, do realize that these are big leaves, uh, and there are versions out there that do have quite a bit larger, bigger leaves. So they are dust magnets. So you'll do want to take maybe a microfiber cloth and just some water. I usually like to use three parts warm water to about one part lemon juice whenever I typically clean the leaves off. But if you don't have any lemon juice, you can just take some regular uh, old tap water and a microfiber cloth and just kind of go over the tops and the bottoms of each leaf just to make sure that uh, the leaf is kind of clean and pristine uh, so that it will be able to kind of breathe through the stomata and actually get a lot of light in there to photosynthesize and make the energy that the plant needs. So about every uh, once a month I like to come in here and just give my plant a nice once over looking over the stems, the petioles, and the nodes on top of each leaf and underneath where a lot of the pests like to hang out uh, and sometimes uh, bright natural light is the best to do but if you don't have that or you're filming at like 9 30 at night like I am you can use a uh, flashlight or a flashlight on your phone to actually help you get in there and see better. This plant doesn't really struggle with too much. A little bit with aphids, mealybugs, spider mites, thrips. Uh, so you just kind of have to look it over. It can have a problem with scale. Uh, so you'll not only want to observe the leaves or the stems or the nodes, but get down here on the branches and the stems and really look in here too to make sure you don't see any kind of bumps uh, that really aren't supposed to be there. Uh, because this plant is kind of okay when it comes to most diseases and uh, some pests. Like this guy, I've had him for about five or six years now, and I've never had a problem except for with not watering enough eerily with mine. Most people that have this plant end up watering it too much, but with mine, he's been okay. So he's lost a couple bottom leaves, uh, but I could probably go ahead and fix that and make sure that the rest of the growth comes in looking pretty full and nice and make sure that the leaves look relatively even. You always want to rotate whenever you're uh, considering the light about every two to three weeks just to make sure he does kind of get uh, ample growth on both sides. You don't want it to look full on one and really it's kind of scrawny and scraggly and idiolated on the other. Now going on into water, uh, this is a tropical plant uh, from around the rainforest areas. So they are used to ample water and a lot of it. Uh, so whenever you take that into consideration during the growing season, typically I will water mine about three to four cups every five to six days somewhere around that I would say about every once a week uh, so if you ever had to go on vacation and you were gone for a week more than likely when you came back your in uh, ficus elastica would still be fine although I would say try to water it a little bit more during the growing season uh, than once a week now going into winter or the slow growing months uh, you do need to cut back some on the watering with this guy I find that uh, with mine I usually give it uh, water about once every three to five every three to four weeks just enough to kind of keep it looking pretty and healthy and alive uh, but you do need to slow the watering down some during the winter time because too much uh, your plant will definitely succumb to root rot uh, and always make sure that your plant is not sitting in water uh, they are tropical plants and they are from the rainforest uh, but the soil needs to be kind of rich organic and drain really well you don't want something that's going to hold on to a lot of water uh, and you want to make sure that your container, and I've got this new container here, I've got about 10 drainage holes in the bottom, just to kind of help make sure that it's not holding onto a whole bunch of water, and any of the excess can go ahead and freely drain out the bottom. Uh, I don't keep a saucer under them, but uh, I may end up putting a plate under there just to help with the floor, uh, but if you do have a saucer or a cash pot, make sure you drain that after about 20 minutes as well. All right, and as I said earlier, that in nature, uh, the plant will get around 100 feet tall, but indoors, it rarely ever even gets anywhere close to that height. I believe they top out around 8 to 10 feet. Uh, but you may have to uh, prune rather avidly uh, just to make sure you get your plant to be about the size that you want. Uh, and as it gets kind of taller, you may have to uh, add in some supports to help kind of hold your plant up. And as you can tell, mine is uh, getting rather tall and top heavy, so it is in dire need of repotting. And as I said, I got one of these pots at Lowe's. Uh, the pot that it's in now is a 10-inch pot. Uh, the pot that I bought is a little bit 
more than 13 inches. Uh, if you go from inside to inside, it's about 13 inches. All right, cool. So this one is made out of a special consistency. Uh, I think it's like some kind of wood grain, uh, some plastics, little bits of plastic, and some resin. So uh, it doesn't crack. It won't lose a whole bunch of color. And it helps to actually insulate a little bit uh, during the winter time. Uh, so it will kind of keep the same consistency and look throughout the years uh, and it's really easy to add drainage holes in the bottom of it So I went ahead and added in two four six eight about nine drainage holes to make sure that this guy won't hold on to a whole bunch of water uh, Which will help out with my ficus elastica That is pretty funny. Uh, typically I'll get a question once a month about why I chose to do this indoors as opposed to being outside. Well, uh, I guess it's really hard to kind of film outdoors. Uh, and I have solid kind of uh, hardwood floors down here uh, without any carpet. So anything that any dust or debris that falls down, I'm able to take a broom and just kind of sweep it out. Uh, and I've got one of these plastic large pots underneath me to catch any other debris that may fall out and not hit directly into the so uh, directly onto the floor. Now I know you can't see what I'm doing down below here, but all I'm doing is taking the pot and kind of squeezing it and working it in between both hands. Just kind of squeezing it as I go around with both hands, trying to loosen it up and knocking out a little bit of the soil onto the floor into this mat. Now I've gotten him out of his container and the roots look pretty good. Uh, the soil is a little wet uh, which is where I wanted it to be. I don't want it to be too dry. Otherwise, it'll be too hard to actually loosen all this up and make any progress with the roots and the root ball. So just ever so slightly and gentle, gently, I am taking my root rake and kind of just working it down in here to loosen up some of this mass and to get around the roots. And then what I can get with the root rake, I can just kind of hold with my left hand and on the bottom kind of support it with my right and then take my fingers and just kind of work it up through the soil and alongside the roots right there. Now you want to wet the soil about 24 hours before you try to repot this. Uh, you don't want it to have a kind of saturated consistency. You want it to be a little moist so that it'll be easier to kind of work your fingers up through there. Uh, but you don't want it to be all muddy and dripping everywhere. So you don't want it to be totally saturated. Now, I don't want to prune away a bunch of the roots. I'm going to work about a third of the soil up and then prune away maybe close to a quarter of the root structure. Probably a little bit less, maybe around 20% or so. But I definitely don't want to go more than half or even up to half of the soil root mass. I don't want to send the plant into shock uh, repotting it. So I will stop there and take my sanitized pruning shears and kind of get to work. Alright, having completed trimming the roots, I went ahead and set the root mass down in the center of the pot and now I will start adding soil down in there to help hold him in place. Alright, now every so often you should take a little break and take your hands and kind of tamp the soil down around the root mass just because you don't want it to all build up and trap air bubbles down around the roots which may later wreak havoc on the plant and you want the plant to be kind of anchored in there and be able to stand upright without falling over and tamping that soil down will ensure that your plant is in there and able to stack or stand up the right way. And then I'm mixing a little bit of cocoa core on top of what I've added just because the plant does like a little bit of acidity and the cocoa core will help match that pretty well. And then I'll just take my hands and kind of mix in a little bit of that cocoa core 
with that new soil that I'm adding in just to make sure it has a fairly even consistency consistency oh, I struggle with that word and then continue to kind of take your hand or your fist and just tap it down a little bit you don't want to push so hard that you're breaking roots but you do want to press down fairly firmly and just keep adding soil until you get it right where you want it now as I said about once a month you really ought to get in there with a microfiber or just a washcloth and some warm water and maybe even some lemon juice just to kind of knock all that dust off and uh, anything else that may acquire on these rather large leaves uh, just to help the leaves kind of fully photosynthesize uh, to their best ability all right now the next thing that I really wanted to do with this guy is really just kind of uh, prune a little bit as you can tell it's not really kind of bushing out or getting as full as I want it to it is getting rather tall but I want to make sure that it will kind of uh, branch off a little bit and get a more fuller kind of look to the plant and the best way to do that is to prune it back a little bit uh, you take the top part of the stem and just cut off about an inch or two anywhere from about one to two leaves uh, be careful and have a little bit of time for this because the stems will start to ooze that white sap uh, and if that gets on you it can hurt your eyes it uh, can upset you uh, your stomach and it can actually it is a little bit toxic uh, and it will cause irritations to your skin uh, so be careful not to get that on you and use protection whether that be uh, gloves or just some kind of paper towels or anything to put between you and that bleeding so I cut off just a little bit throw it down there and then put the napkin kind of right up to the stem kind of like a little band-aid and just kind of hold it there just for a little bit until the uh, sap stops running and it'll stop oozing but just apply a little bit of pressure all right and because it wouldn't be one of my videos unless I did forget something I wanted to show you that I did have to go ahead and add in some <laughs> support for my uh, taller branches that look like they're about to kind of fall over. So I just went ahead and took kind of like a green bean pole and stuck it down in there and I will kind of tie it rather loosely uh, with this planter's rope here and kind of secure it on there. Uh, and like I said, I did prune, so avid pruning with this guy is something that you need to look into if not consider uh, or your plant will kind of get all lanky uh, and not really kind of bushy and look full like your typical rubber tree plants do like I said this is not our ficus plant this is your grandmother's ficus and your mother's ficus uh, and they have been a little bit forgotten so I want to kind of revive this plant and make sure that uh, it does get some of the credit that it deserves uh, because it's been around for a long time and they are beautiful plants and like I said I kind of forgot about mine and he needs some uh, much needed TLC well other than that the only other thing I need to do is give this plant a little bit of water just to kind of help anchor him down in there a little bit better and make sure that I've knocked out any of the rest of those air bubbles that may be uh, Tampin may have missed or it might be a little bit further down than I can reach. But gravity and water will help kind of rid any other kind of uh, air bubbles that may be below the soil. Like I said, uh, let me know what your favorite variety is. I have the burgundy, but eventually I either want to get the dark prints or one of the variegated ones. I see those kind of cream colored green ones. Uh, they are gorgeous and I think that if mine was about this size for the variegated ones, it would look really cool. So. Uh, be on the lookout for the next video with this. Uh, I'm going to do an update video on this guy in probably about three or four months just to kind of show you how the pruning's done and the supports and to see if he's kind of added on any other kind of mass and if pruning was warranted or necessary. While you're at it, go ahead and leave me a comment and let me know what your favorite variety is. Uh, and don't forget, hit the subscribe button or the bell next to it. That way you'll know anytime that I've uploaded a new video. You guys take it easy, have a good one, and don't forget, always plant prudently. Thank you, YouTube.